naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. All right. Want to welcome everybody to Iggy Garcia Live. This is episode 145, The New Path. So, um, here we are. It's Friday. I hope you're able to uh, take the next 60 minutes just to kind of hang out with me a little bit. We're going to cover a little bit of stuff, talk a little bit about current events, talk a little bit about shamanism, talk a little bit about this thing called The New Path. This new thing that, uh, is happening to a lot of us so I hope you are able to just chill and relax for a little bit but like we start every show we're going to uh, clear the space today we're going to actually start with the sage we're going to cleanse ourselves a little bit get into ceremony here we do things with purpose here so we want to make sure that we're clearing the energy cleaning ourselves cleaning ourselves this combination of sages that I have in my little bundle here. Okay. We're also going to light a ancestral candle. Remember our ancestors, give thanks to them. Remember them, honor them. And also I want to ask for prayers for my uh, family that's traveling to California, Jake, Markel, Liliana, and Leo, as they journey to the West Coast on their new journey, their new adventure, their new path, their new uh, exploration, and all the things that come with that. So I ask my ancestors, I ask the universe to guide them, protect them, and I ask the universe to protect everybody who's on the road with them at the same time. So giving thanks to everybody who, who's there. And welcome all those who are on the show. And uh, we'll always remember those who came before us. Because <clears throat> regardless if you had issues with people that came before you, there's one thing that is for sure. If the only thing we say is thank you for life, then that's all we have to do. But there has been a lot of groundwork and a lot of movement to bring you to this present moment in time. You are representative of your clan of your tribe, of your ancestors. So it's very important to remember. What does the candle signify? It's the light. It's the hope. It's the things when the darkness gets dark inside of us or out around us, we light a candle and remember that we are not the only ones who are alone. We are not the only ones who are afraid. We're not the only ones who are fearful. There are many of us. There's a lot of us. But once we band together and we're together and we work together, the light becomes brighter and brighter. When you light one candle, two candles, three candles, you light your whole community, you light up your whole city, you light up your life, you light up your heart, you light up your spirit and your soul. So that's why we light candles and that's why we give thanks to those who came before us. Let that burn as we go. So I want to say hi to Steffi there and I want to say hi to Willow. Welcome to the show as I see you guys are popping in. Thanks for being here with me on my podcast and calling the calling the good spirits to be with us today. And uh, since we called in the ancestors, we want to ask for our higher self and our guides to be with us and share with us and be able to work through us and give us messages and the things that we need to do and the things we need to hear. So, <coughs> excuse me, clear my throat. Anyhow. What, what do we do here at IggyGarcia.com? What do we do on Iggy Garcia Live? What, what, what is the premise of this show? Why do I come on the air and share? What? So for those of you who want to know, uh, you know, back in 2008, I had a desire to share what was in my head. And, you know, some of us are very good writers. Some of us are not. 
Now, I don't want to knock myself down, but I can't say that I have the concentration to write as well as I maybe I believe I speak. <laughs> let's, let's clear that. I'm not the most articulate, but I, I think I get my message across. But the cool thing about it is I like to share. I like to talk. I like to teach. I like to be able to, you know, relay the message that is uh, taught to me or the message that comes through me. And so this is what I do. In the work that I do in the shamanic realms and the metaphysical realms, the holistic realms, the spiritual realms, uh, the godly realms, the angelic realms, all the realms, you know, they, they channel through all of us. Every single person on this planet has gifts, magical, powerful gifts. Every single one of you. There's not one of you here, good or bad, you all have gifts. Every single one. Now, will you come into your gifts? Well, that's a whole different story. That's a whole different uh, set of circumstances, a whole set of, you know, what ifs. Some of us may not come into our gifts in this lifetime. Some of us may never understand why we feel the way we do. Some of us may have tons of questions that may never get answered. Some of us may go, hey, why do I feel this way? And somebody will give you a myriad of answers and you may not agree with any one of them. So most of you have walked your life, I've walked my life, seeing the world through the eyes and through the programming that has been put inside here by others who have who that we held up in high regards or high esteem or just they were just there mostly into your parents or your grandparents or somebody who raised you or the system that raised you either way the point is this when we grow up when we finally step out of that magical you know numbers of teens and we go into our 20s the world starts to change for us a lot and you know we start to see the world from a place that we want to magically create things and uh, have this sense of freedom, this freedom that we create for ourselves, this thing that we call, I'm liberated and I'm not under my parents' rule anymore, blah, 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 you know, and you know, you, you're invincible, you're indestructible, you know, you do things that you probably wouldn't have done as a kid because you were just too afraid or you were told you couldn't do it or you were afraid that you might hurt somebody or hurt yourself and then as life progresses things happen you either get married you have kids and your life changes again another path has changed another part of you has uh, evolved we're a constant evolution every single person who's on this planet every single person who's moving through so the topic is new path you know for many of us we don't have a specific uh, concise path that we'd say that this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to walk it and this is how we're going to do it a lot of us just go through life just moving through the through the routines that we've created a lot of it's i go to i wake up go to sleep i go to my job blah 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 i bathe I the kids or i feed the dogs you know very very systematic way of living what i'm talking about is the path that's inside of you that yearning that that thing that boils your blood, that you get goosebumps when you talk about it. A lot of you don't talk about it anymore because you pretty much have just resided to this is how life is going to be. Well, I'm here to tell you that could be true. But I'm also here to tell you that you also don't have to live like that. You don't have to be like that. You don't have to get caught in the routines of life, in the mundane things of life. But it's so easy to get sucked into it and believe that you know there's nothing more than what it is because we don't see we don't have and we don't sur surround ourselves with the proper nourishment and what is that nourishment what is that sustenance that you need well first of all just the same way you eat the same way that you you consume and you absorb foods and you know water or soda or beer or wine whatever you're drinking whatever it is you also have to have that with the people that are around you you have to have that with the 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 support that you've created for yourself now a lot of you have your support system has broken down through loss through death through divorce separation and breakups 
but it doesn't mean that you can't you don't you don't stop it's very important that we continue to create and foster these new relationships and create these new paths pathways with people it's just like the brain the brain has multiple pathways and boom 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 we're going here and going there we're thinking about a hundred different things and we're doing this and doing that so now all of a sudden we're in this new pathway this new path we've been we've been told that we can't go outside we've been told that we can't do this or that because something might happen to us but that's not a new message that's that's a message as old as time now the question I have for you is now that we're moving out of this renaissance this golden period whatever you want to call it this darkness this pandemic this this plague of sorts because we're going to move out of it we have to it's just common sense it happens what are you going to do what is your plan from there are you going to wait another five to ten years to decide what that's going to be well, i'm going to tell you if you wait another five to ten years you're going to be five ten years older okay so i'm 54 if i wait 10 years i'll be 64 and you know as the markers count down as the hourglass in the sand falls through there my time on this planet starts to diminish a little bit more every time so what are we going to do with our life what what is it that you truly want to do what is it what is this new path now that you've been given the opportunity many of you are vaccinated and many of you are not but those of you let's for example for those of you who are vaccinated now that you're vaccinated what is your plans what is your goals what are your dreams and aspirations and it's the same with those of you who are not vaccinated what are your dreams what are your goals and what are your aspirations to do better because we have to do better we have to improve as a society as a community as a, a global family because we're not just relegated to just the americas you know there's a there's a big myth here that this is just about the u.s i've talked to people like that doesn't matter to me because that's over there in another country i'm going to tell you something everything affects everything in this world physically spiritually emotionally no matter how you look at it what happens over there hap affects you here you know you see the, the the crisis in the middle east with is israel and palestine that affects people here as much as it affects people there because <clears throat> it forces people to feel it forces people to observe it forces people to not necessarily pick a side it's not even about picking a side it's about knowing what's right you know what is correct and that's not picking sides that's just saying hey you know what that's wrong <clears throat> I think society is that's where we're changing and we're understanding that the old system that we live by doesn't necessarily help us or work as well as it used to everything's accelerating since the Mayan calendar and you know when it's when it switched everything was ex uh, moving exponentially faster ten times faster everything would just totally move faster now you know this path that I'm talking about is, is your own personal journey your own personal wake and your own personal gift that you can give to yourself now the question is how do you do that for many people it's like oh, well, I don't know how to do it. well the thing is you really need to sit down and just ask yourself get a mirror and just look at yourself and say what are we gonna do what's going to happen what's our plan are we happy where we're at can we do better can we really move into the space we need to move into what is it that I need to change in my life <clears throat> what is it that I have to look at because I will only listen to you because you're the only person I trust because remember when we look in the mirror we can't help but look at ourselves and say this is a reflection of what I see how I project my back into my mind of what I look like and what I feel you're either happy with what you see or you're very unhappy with what you see <clears throat> regardless that is a version of you a version that's a version when I look in the mirror that's a version of myself because the true self is here outside of that mirror reflecting back because the mirror doesn't speak back the only thing that speaks back is the voice that I project onto the mirror, onto the visual that's there. So the conversation is with ourselves. And sometimes we have, a human must have eye contact with themselves or with another human being and be very honest. 
And when you look at yourself, you can't lie to yourself. You think you can say whatever you want to say, but when you scry in the mirror and you can see the messages, you can see the lines on your face, you can see the lines on your lips, your nose, your colors of your eyes, <clears throat> the little crow's feet on your eyes, you see, you see how many eyebrows are flipped one side to the other. You see the one mustache hair flipped the other way. We notice more things about ourselves than anybody would ever notice about us. We are the most critical creatures about ourselves when we look in the mirror. So it becomes very difficult to look in the mirror. But if you do it and you practice long enough and you have confidence in your ability that we can do better and you can succeed, you will have, <clears throat> you will work. And you will move into those directions. Because when you tell yourself and you look at yourself and say, you know what, I love you. And you say it long enough and you say it every day, I love you, I believe in you, I trust you. And I know that we're getting better each day. And each day we're improving. Is that being vain? No, it's not being vain. Absolutely not. Vain is when you're disrespecting other people when you're looking in the mirror. And when you're you're not being sincere about about you to others. This is a dialogue with self. This is uh, a com uh, communication with you. With the higher self. <clears throat> if you ever want to look at yourself at a higher being higher version of yourself, the higher version of yourself will never lie to you. It won't even give you frivolous answers. It will give you straight out answers. Oh, but you have a hard time listening to the higher self. Then clean your ears. Open your heart. Open your soul. Open your spirit. I don't need excuses. People give themselves so many excuses why they can't succeed and why they can't move forward. You know, a lot of people, they always look they always look for the they always look for the roadblock. And then I don't know why people do this and I don't know why I do it sometimes. But we look for the roadblocks in life. Sometimes we the roadblock <clears throat> we see it and we know we can avoid it. But gosh, we gotta hit that roadblock because so something in the roadblock that will teach us something. Instead of going around it or over it, under it, or just moving it. But we're creatures of habit. That's the thing. We're creatures of habit, so we're always going to do things. We're always going to do things. Always. Because that's how we are. We find ourselves in relationships with people who are very similar to the last relationship. We find ourselves spending more money than we have. You know, it's all about discipline. Our discipline is, is weak sometimes. So when I talk about this new path... Because the old path's over. Now, now, you've been given an opportunity to think, an opportunity to sit, an opportunity to dwell, an opportunity to grieve, an opportunity to suffer, an opportunity to watch some of your loved ones go to heaven. You know, as much as I've lost my family, some of you here all also lost your family. And you know what? Our family wants us to move forward. Our family wants us to move into the direction that is best for the whole lineage. Because see, <clears throat> you think your life just affects you. Even if you don't have kids, you affect the world. You affect everybody. If you have a job and you don't have any kids and that's all you have and that's all you ever do in your life, whatever you do with that job, whatever you are creating in that job, in that scenario, you're manifesting creating out to the world something that's very strong, very powerful, or something very dark. Because we create light and darkness. You know, when I coach soccer, when I coach my kids soccer, when I, I've been doing this for about 30 plus years. I always tell the kids, practice, 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 and then practice how you play. Don't just go half speed. Don't mess around. I said, whatever you do on this job, whatever you do, this is your job for me. I just tell them, this is your job. However you perform here, you will perform the next job. It's like when I tell kids, oh, I got a job, I hate it, blah, blah. But you know what? That's your stepping stone. You have a job at a crappy restaurant job. If you do it right, and you don't cut the corners, and, you, and you're not resentful, and I know it's hard because restaurant works hard, then when you get to the thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar $50,000 job a year, you're going to do it right. You can't wait to do it right when you get there. You have to do everything right from the start. You have to have, you know, you have to have 
integrity in when you do things. And so many people just do things half half ass just to get by, just to get through, and just to scoot because they don't see them have a path. Because here in this world, we don't teach people to have dreams. We don't teach people to dream. We don't teach people to goal set. We don't teach people how to grow. We don't teach people how to move into the next phases of their life. Schools are kind of doing it, teaching kids how to use checkbooks and stuff like that. But, you know, there's more to that. Life is, life is, life can be very difficult if not mapped out correctly. You know, if we had, if we had classes where we just taught our kids to have the belief and the desire to do better than what they're where they're at, I believe kids would do better. I believe I would have done better. We're so we're so test oriented that we just want people to have results. And because the results dictate where you're gonna be, how are you gonna be, and where you're gonna be placed in life. You know, my friends, I'm not here I'm not making this stuff up. A lot of you guys are teachers, a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. But we understand that in this world, not everybody's gonna be a millionaire. Not everybody's gonna be a doctor. Not everybody is going to be a bus driver. Not everybody's going to be the, the garbage man or woman. But it does happen. We have a system where it's designed that we need to employ this world. But in this new path, after the pandemic, after this happened, we have a lot of opportunity to do some new things. That's that's my whole point about this show tonight, about the new path. It's about creating new new avenues for yourself. Things that you wouldn't have done before. Because you were too intertwined. Listen, when you couldn't go to work, you had to do something. You had to stay home, right? So you were forced to do something you didn't want to do. But see, now you have the opportunity to move. There's, this is why the restaurant businesses are so low right now. I, I used to own restaurants. This is why people don't want to go back to the restaurant business. Not because it's scary or the pandemic. No, it's because people, people understand that they can do better. They can do much more for their lives. You know, they, they scrape by for years, you know. And not to take away anything from the restaurant industry, because I was part of it. I grew up in it. But I also saw how the, in- the restaurant the industry manipulated and kept people down or advanced them and then didn't advance them anymore. There's, there's only so much growth. And I also watched how people got torn down when they had a desired dream. I watched this. I witnessed this. I was part of it. I remember when my dreams got shot down. Are you going to college? Yeah, I went to college for a little bit. But if I don't go to college, everybody treats you different. So, when we talked about stuff about the pandemic, when we were talking about, when we were in the thick of it, when I was doing my shows with some of my friends here, we talked about this renaissance, this evolution, this, um, this thing that came out of it. And you know, A lot of us came out with new skills. We came out with new dreams. A lot of us came out a little chubby. Like me. (laughs) Like to eat. Hey, what can I say? But a lot of us tried new things. I also went on a fast. I went on a 40-day fast where I didn't eat any meat. Just had strictly vegetarian diet. I learned a lot about myself. Those are things that you do. This is what happens. So I'm hoping that the world will will open its heart, open its mind, open its spirit and allow change to come in, changes to come in and revamp this world. Make it make this world into something very very beautiful. Because when we look at it, we're doing all the same things. You know, we're we're, we're kind of still doing the same things a little bit. We're not moving into these spaces. We're we're fighting an angry war. Of opinions finding an angry war of of you know just things that just aren't correct anymore when can we I'm not saying we're gonna have true peace because true peace will never be acquired because humans don't want that because if we wanted that that's where we would be but what's the closest we can get where how close can we get to that peace in parts to make it better now I'm here sitting at my computer and I have multiple ideas and I'm not, I'm not in those regions and I don't know how those people feel but I know what it is to lose somebody I know what it is to go without food 
I know what it is to be hurt. I know what it is to be alone. I know what it is to be afraid. I know what it know. I know what it means to cry. And you're not going to tell me that that's not happening around the world. Because it is. And when I say the phrase, it's good to be here, it's an appreciation to <clears throat> honor the what you have in front of you and what the universe can give to you. It's good to be here. And when I say that, I mean that. It's good to be here. Just saying it feels good. It's good to be here. It's giving gratitude and thanks for the things that are in front of us, the people that are with us, the things that we've been given in our lives, you know, the, the, the things that we have and are able to hold on to and obtain. The ability to just open up doors. You know, many of us have opened up in our third eye, but many of us, you know, don't know what to do with it. Our spirit is floating out there in our bodies. You know, the connection of body and spirit and soul, all of that works together. You can be half here, not all the way here, and still be out there. But you're not complete. You're only in like one foot in, one foot out. <clears throat> and so a lot of people have come to the place where they're opening up into spaces of things they don't understand. They don't know what's happening. They don't get it. They don't they don't understand why why they feel the way they do. I'm gonna wave to everybody saying hi. So, you know, where does humanity go from here? What is the new path we're going to create? I see a lot of changes. I see some things that are unfolding. I see some things that are becoming better, which is good. And I'm glad. But I know we can keep doing better. We can keep moving into the spaces that we need to move into. So, you know, this is what we're doing now. And my friends separation of people from other people because they're different or because they don't do this or didn't do that doesn't work even the people with shots or no shots and separating themselves it's still separation <clears throat> it's still rejecting people because they're different but you get the circumstances are different i get the circumstances are different i understand That we've lived with so many things for eons. You know, we have to adapt our adaptability into this new path, this new place that we're going. We're doing things and seeing things, dreaming about things, visual, having visions, having feelings, premonitions, intuitions. A lot of you are having this. What is it? It could be a, a myriad of things. Do I have the answer for you? Probably not. And probably yes, all at the same time. There are some things that are just privy to you. Some things are just yours to see and to understand. And sometimes things are not to be understood. It's just a vision to see. And sometimes, you know, when something is presented to you, it's a gift for you to unravel and to unwind and to let it happen over time. It's like opening up a present, you know? You know it's there. You know you feel it. You know you can see it. You just don't know what it's going to do or how it's going to work or how it's going to be. But little by little, you tear away the paper. You tear away the wrapping. You throw the bow. And then you get to the box and there's another box inside. And you're going, oh my God. And then that box has wrapping paper on it too. And then you're ripping and pouring. Shh, shh. Throwing out the paper. And you're going, and finally you get to the box. In the anticipation, this is how stages of awakening happen. You get to the box, and you still don't know what's in it, but you can feel it. You don't know if it's big or small, you just know it's there, and, and you're so hyper-focused on it. And then you open the box, little by little, you break it open, and inside there's like a whole bunch of paper, paper wrapped up in balls, you know? You know how you wrap it all up? And inside there, you start to shuffle through, move through, inside there's a little box. You shake a little bit, and you hear something rattling inside, and then you rip off the tape on the top, <clears throat> and inside <clears throat> you see that straw paper, you know, that paper, shredded paper. 
and then you move that aside and then you open it up and you pull out a piece of Himalayan sea salt and then at that moment you're going wow that's so cool that's so beautiful that's amazing and you're so fixated and you're right on it <clears throat> thinking about where it came from, how it got here, who gave it to you, why they gave it to you, what's the significance behind it. And then you're like, you fixate for a little bit of time because you've opened up your gift. And then you take, then life kicks in. The cake comes, another present comes, you put this down. You put down the piece of salt or rock. And then you move on to the next one. Now the thing about it is that we've become awakened and now we're not open and then we move on to the next thing then we just then we forget about the rock to some degree then we open the next one the next one and then we get to the point where we've done so much and we're, we're grateful we're thankful now we have tools we have tools we have different things that we can use you know little gifts that just appear to you and they all have meaning they all have reason why they're in our life you know you start to you start to manifest you start to create so this is our new path so this is when we're awakened now to be awakened is also go back to sleep to do the things that we normally do to go back into that state very good all right <clears throat> so i want to shift gears a little bit now we're going to play make believe imagination time we're going to do some creative exploration on why these things are the way they are and why they present themselves now this is a disclaimer half the things i'm going to talk about are either true or not true uh just part of my imagination part of my creation part of just Asking questions and being kind of goofy at the same time. So those of you who are probably going to step into the show are probably going to hear me say some weird stuff and probably going to be like, you lost it, man. So I'm just going to give you that disclaimer now. With Insights Radio, they don't have any, you know, they don't they don't necessarily support or, or, or not support what I'm going to say here. But all right, so... <laughs> So my family came to visit, and my son-in-law Jake came. And I remember this: you gotta have it up in mind, people. I don't want you to get all crazy on me here. So Jake, and when he was in Virginia, some of the military guys took magnets, and these magnets, just basically a household magnet, nothing special, nothing. If it's too big, it it won't work, I guess, because it just won't. It's too heavy for your arm. But this is what happens. We took a magnet, we put it on the stove, and we're like, we're going to test this theory about nanites in the body. And we're having fun. And we're just having... But, you know, I didn't think it was going to work. I didn't, I've seen it before. So we cleaned Jake's arm off and everything, so there's, you know, nothing. And then we, we put the magnet on, and it stuck on his arm. Now, the question is, maybe it's cohesion. Maybe it's just the level of the arm pitch. Maybe he's magnetized. We really don't have an answer. I've looked and I've had people fact check me and and Facebook even fact check me on this, but but it was still interesting because when I'm talking about new pathways, the only thing that I probably did well, was like that I probably kind of retract is saying, Oh, it's the virus, it's the virus you know, because in the next step we did it on me and it worked too, and I haven't taken the COVID vaccine. But I have had vaccines over the years. And so I thought it was kind of comical. Because it was like. Well that's crazy. How does that work? Because I was like. Okay. It shouldn't be working on me. Because I don't have the vaccine. You know. Because in our mind. Here, this is the programming. This is. This is where I'm talking about. These new pathways. And these new things we're creating. I was. I wasn't. Bent out of heck to believe that it was going to stick in my arm. Because I didn't think it was going to stick. 
a finger's not sticking on a jig, but it's stuck in my arm. And I'm going, well, I'm good. golly gee, there it is. It's on my arm. On both arms, as a matter of fact. It wasn't too. Now, I've had people, you know, come on and saying, they post things, and they're like, oh, well, you know, that's fake. But guys, we did it because we weren't really necessarily trying to debunk. I thought it was kind of funny. Chicken and I thought it was hilarious. We were laughing at all the comments people were giving. And I didn't really respond in a negative way because I'm just a very magnetized man. I'm just highly magnetized. That's that was my conclusion. I'm the most magnetized person in the world. You know, on those two points of my arm. <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun to see because, you know, it wasn't something to get mad about. It wasn't something to get angry about. And I thought it was really comical. Some of the comments that I, I you know, I told her about just I'm. You know, we're just having fun with it. And we did have fun with it. And, you know, it didn't go nasty or anything, which is cool. But it still left me wondering, and it still left me going, <clears throat> we tried spoons, we tried quarters, we tried uh, paper clips, and it didn't work. But the magnet worked. And why it worked, I don't know. I'm sure there's an answer out there. I just don't have that answer. I didn't really want to spend too much time on it. I did a search. There wasn't really much on it. A lot of people said it was physics, just the way the arm and, you know, it's kind of when people put spoons on their face, you know how those spoons and they let them stick on there, kind of like that, on your nose, I think, on your nose is what it was, you can put a spoon on your nose, kind of works on that same concept, but either way, we had fun with it, and it was, it was one of those things just, it could have blown up in your face very easily, but it didn't, and, you know, I still comment on it, and Facebook uh, put uh, some kind of tag on it, which I think is funny either way. But but I also understand that there are people going to believe and go, oh my god, Iggy's arm, you know, like so. Maybe that's the part that I have to kind of be careful with when I do stupid stunts like that. But either way, I admit I take responsibility for what I've done and what I shared. So for those of you who think it was funny, thank you. For those of you who don't think it was funny, thank you. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It was It's on my timeline if you want to check it out. Okay, moving on to the next zany thing. The next thing on my, on my list is people's reactions to the vaccine. Now, this one can be very sensitive. This one can be a little bit more... Uh, yeah, it's more sensitive. So I, I had this crazy thought, and I'm thinking to myself, and this is, remember, this is imagination time. This is creation time. This is just us. I'm not creating conspiracies. I don't even, haven't even heard this. So this is just what rolled around in my head. And I, I mentioned to Kate's online, so I mentioned it to her earlier. I was like, what if, what if there are like these aliens that came a long time ago? Maybe there's this alien war we don't know about. And I have this like crazy thoughts. I have these crazy thoughts all the time. And maybe they're just trying to figure out who was an alien. So they're injecting people. And those of you who who don't have any, any reaction, well, you're not an alien. You're pretty much a human being. But the ones who get reactions, it kind of like um, exposes who you are. This is like a movie, okay? So you gotta use your imagination. You gotta have fun with this. You got to have like this imagination. So I got this. I saw this poor lady and her tongue was like huge, as big as my microphone. I felt really bad for her, but I'm thinking, I wonder if she's an alien. I really thought this. I really, my mind went there. Maybe this is how they are trying to find the aliens here. Because remember, we're talking about uh, June 1st. We're going to have all this disclosure, right? About UFOs and aliens and stuff, which is coming up in the government. And so I'm thinking to myself, Maybe there's more to this than my my crazy ass mind is going. But you know, as a shaman, you have to really think about stuff like this because the things that we think is not mystical is mystical sometimes. Like the magnet, it could be a mystical thing, just something that just is just works out. Because to travel into somebody's mind, you tell you tell if I tell somebody I'm traveling in your mind, half the people think I'm crazy. But in, in shamanism, we travel with you. We go in with you. How's that possible? You can't do that. You know what? In this universe, it's a creative universe. You can do anything. I made that magnet stick. 
even if it was physics or whatever, it stuck because the intention was I wanted to stick on Jake's arm and it stuck. Was it my intention to make it stick? Probably. But back to the aliens, because I want to talk about the aliens, because I thought it was kind of interesting. So maybe there's a vaccine that we're giving people this, this uh, since there's no COVID in it, that there's like these other, you know, markers in it, you know, that, that are supposed to uh, help you. Maybe they're finding the aliens who are, are descendants of people who are aliens. And they're getting violently sick. Because they remind me in this one article that was shared with me about the War of the Worlds. How the microscopic creatures, the microbes actually conquered the invaders. Now remember, if I can have these crazy ideas. H.G. Will had crazy ideas about aliens coming. So what's the difference, right? There is no difference. It's, this is how science fiction stories are written every day. This is how Star Wars was created. This is how Aliens was created. This is how, you know, all kinds of things are created. We get so wrapped up. My, I guess my point is we get so wrapped up and things have to be correct and right all the time. Oh my God, you're going to scare people. You're going to make people in fear. No. Think. I want people to think. I'm thinking right now. When I'm thinking about people taking the vaccine, have reactions to it, they're aliens. Maybe they are. Maybe they have a a condition that reacts to it. That's that's the logical mind. That's the logical mind saying, you know, they just have some kind of uh, part of the body it just doesn't uh, respond, and they have a, you know, the their body doesn't respond to that because they're allergic to this and allergic to that, and you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my analysis on what the doctor so no. That's the answer they usually give you. I'm talking about. The mind, the one that goes boom, ooh, ooh God, the tongue's all blown up. Mm. It's an alien. It's an alien, people. We know you, who you are now. We know who you are now. Have I gone crazy? No. I'm being creative, using my mind. I'm exploring and trying to explain something that I can't explain because the doctors can't explain it. They don't even know why it's doing that and why it's happening. Is it shock? Anaphylactic shock? It's allergic reaction to it, Jim. I don't know. I don't know why this Jim here. So he's having an, an allergy attack. Possibly, yes. Now, I do have a firm believer that we're all not from the earth. So that's one of my beliefs as a shamanic practitioner. Because most of us have allergies to things that we can't handle on this planet. Some of us are allergic to pollen. Some of us are allergic to grass. Some of us are allergic to, you know, foods. Because our bodies, no matter how much and how much time it's gone... We just can't adjust. Oh my God, I've got all kinds of crazy theories, man. I, I, I believe this was a penal colony. I, I believe that we were dumped here and left here. You know, kind of like uh, our founding fathers here when they were, they came to the Americas. They were all prisoners and they were all the, the riffraff and blah, blah, blah. Same thing. Why couldn't that happen? Of course not. It could have happened. There was a movie, for those of you who don't know, there was a movie about the Greys. And I don't remember the name, but the Greys were actually people from the future maybe someone will help me with this movie title and so people are trying to figure out why these graves were coming and what they were trying to do they thought they were like doing weird stuff and they were trying to no they were trying to they were trying to save their future their world but they had to come back into the past and they had to find they had to find their family tree in the past from the future and they had evolved into these these gray people into these aliens Okay, it's kind of like the last Mimsy. Man, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the last Mimsy, where they send this bear, and there's like a Intel chip in it, and they're looking for this one particular person, this one particular line person who has the gifts to save the future. And for years, as a kid, I believed that alien spaceships were actually classrooms, that they were actually coming back from the from well, yeah, coming from the future to the past because everything time is irrelevant, time is an illusion. So time simultaneously exists. Everything exists simultaneously. It's a really hard concept to think about because to think about how everything simultaneously, simultaneously you know, existing at the same time. Because then we talk about destiny and free will and all that, which is a whole different topic, whole different show. This is more about the imagination. This second segment is about imagination and creation. Okay. And so, for years, I thought that UFOs were just like colleges or schools observing. And you know what? Sometimes there's a there's an Iggy on the plane or on the spaceship pushes that cloaking button off uh oh cloaking is off they see us oh no 
<clears throat> Why can't that be? Why isn't that possible? You know, it's funny because when I posted an article about uh, traveling speed of light and going in and coming back, blah, 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 math, it's mathematics. I got more responses from people, and smart people, not just your average person who doesn't just believe stuff like me, because I just believe stuff. But they were like, well, that's not possible. I said, why? Because no one's done it. Well, okay, no one's done it. Prove that you, no, prove to me that no one's done it. Well, maybe they they did and they came back and nobody's here. You know, see, that's the thing. That's that's the thing about things when you talk about people about this kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> you you talk about this stuff with people. Sometimes they, you know they want to debunk it because it doesn't have an answer. And you know, there are some things that just don't have answers. There's some things that you just have to live with it. You're not going to get an answer for it. Why can't you see the face of God? Because you will die. Why do you die? Because you don't have the capacity to see it, right? Sounds logical. It also sounds really unfair. But you know, we have to use our imagination. And my friend Kate again, we, we talked about we talked about uh, how this the Native Americans, when they were here in this country, when they were on this side of the world, when they, they, they didn't recognize what a ship was. Like one of those big Spaniard ships when they came here because they had no point of reference to even see it, to even look at it, until it was shown to them and, and expressed to them and, and presented to them. Then eventually, what, had, what happens? What happens? Someone shows it to you, presents it to you, and then you see it. So on June 1st, what's already happened, you're going to see things that you're not, you've never seen before. My prediction. I could be wrong. It's just a prediction. It's my imagination. I believe things are going to appear. Things, they're preparing us to see things that we hadn't seen before. You know, it's like some of your cartoons and some of your animes, you watch them, The Matrix. There's some things like, um, for example, there's this one show where I think my friend Sherry sent this to me. Where, and I watched this cartoon, actually, I watched this whole series, the one she sent me, where they walk into this white room and then they push this button and eventually the room appears. But the whole point was the room was already there. But since they had like fluoride in their body, the fluoride had a special, uh, had a special encoding of sorts that it could block off certain vision, visionary, uh, you couldn't optically see certain things. And then they push the button, the frequency would turn on, and you wouldn't be able to see it. This is somebody's imagination. This is someone's creation. Is it real? I don't know. Could it be real? Yes. Is it real? Who, who knows? Does it matter? Maybe. The point is, when you read things, sometimes it's the answer is right in front of you. The answer is right there. Okay, and sometimes we just don't want to see it because we want things to be so linear. But if you're going to step out of the 3D world, then you can't have 3D thinking in the fifth in the 5D world, in the 5D. You can't. It won't work. Okay, it's like trying to take a square peg and put it in a round or a round peg in a square hole. It won't work because they're not meant to. When you elevate your thinking, your thought, and open up your chakras and your third eye and your crown chakra you can't go back to that to and resonate into the space you can but you're not going to like it there you're going to suffer there and you're going to wonder why you're feeling that way and why you feel so confused and why you feel because you you want normalcy and you cannot be normal anymore you are not going to be normal anymore once you open up that third eye chakra and the crown chakra once you open those up everything that you knew as normal is over it's done complete and for those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about give me a call and I'll explain it to you but it's so easy to get wrapped up in all this stuff now the reason why I played imaginary game with you because I thought it was important I thought it's important for you to when you're traveling your new path to see things a little differently to see things as maybe this is how it is maybe things aren't how we see maybe our little fact checking isn't maybe it's right maybe it's wrong but why is it we cannot believe that something is the way it is? For years, we didn't believe in UFOs. 
it was a joke. Everybody, you laughed at people. For years, people laughed at people who thought JFK was assassinated by our government. For years. We got lied to about fluoride. We got lied to about margarine. We got lied to about tobacco. We got lied to by a lot of different things. So, you can be lied to. You can be presented <clears throat> and shown a world that is painted for you because you're not painting. Because you're allowing somebody else to paint the world for you. If you want the world to be different, then you have to be the artist. Instead of being the person looking at the piece of art on the wall. You will be, from time to time, the spectator in the event. And sometimes you will be the participant. You'll know when to participate. You'll know when to just watch. So, imagination time is every day. Create ideas, beliefs, possibilities. You know, you're having these, these things happening to you that you can't explain. Then create, imagine, and wonder, and build around it. If you want answers, you have to build onto the story. What does it mean? You have to create. You have to move into the direction in the, in, in the, in the space that you're not willing to go. Because you'll find the answers in that space. You'll find the answers to your questions when you go into that space. Why did people, when 9-11 happened, you know, they, 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 they said the plane burned down, the fuel burned it down. And there are people who believe that. And there will be people to the day, to the days of the end, they'll believe that. There are other people who says it was, it was a demolition, uh, you know, tactic. Who did it? We don't know. Some people say it was our government. Some people say it was terrorists. But my point is this. Whatever you resonate, wherever you put your mind, wherever you, you think of it, that's where you go. That's exactly where you go. That's exactly where your energy takes you. If you think the pandemic's bad, it's bad. There are people who don't think it's bad. They think it was the best thing could have happened to humanity. Because it made us think about things. It made us really look at ourselves. How disconnected we are to Mother Earth. How disconnected we are from her love and from her care. We are very disconnected from her. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be, dis to be disconnected from your mother? It's like fighting with your mom and you don't have conversation with her and you're not able to talk to her and she doesn't want nothing to do with you. It's very difficult to move and sometimes feel certain types of emotions and feelings. Well, the Earth's the same way. When you pollute her and you hurt her, she does things. She heats up, she gets warmer. You put more toxins in the air, you heat up the Earth, things melt. You know, Antarctica, for example, for years, they won't let us go down there. Why? I don't know. Is there something there? Who knows? Some people believe there is. Now a big chunk of it flew off. You know? You know, I also posted the other day uh, a comic book strip from Superman, where we're inside the Superman, say, part of his Krypton, part of his planet, inside of a jar, and so he could find a place where he could actually open Krypton and give everybody a better life. But in the meantime, he has to put them all inside this little glass thing. Who's to say we're not inside of a big glass tube? We don't know. There's no way to prove it. There's no way for us to logically think that. There are people who believe the Earth is flat. Still. Do I believe the Earth is flat? No, I don't know. <laughs> it's oblong, at least. It's not quite round. It's a little bit funky. But, you know, you can see why people would believe them. Because the firmament, it's called the firmament. In the Bible, it talks about the firmament. So if the Bible talks about firmament, it must be true, right? I don't know. But this is my point. Imagination. Creation. This is the only reason we have the firmament or any ideas of this. Because people would explore. People would travel. There are some things that were done in early times that we can't replicate. You know, some of my posts talk about how they precision, precision cut certain stones. And the commentator was like, how they did that by hand is it's nearly impossible. Some people say it looks like a laser cut. You know, we don't give a lot of credit to old societies. Egyptian, Peruvian. Actually, they were actually Incan back then. Mayans. 
the Celts. You know, we don't give credit. We don't give credit to these old ancient societies because we're so advanced. We can fly planes, drive cars. <clears throat> Why am I whispering? I don't know. Hey Siri. Huh? What you doing? I'm pondering eternity. It's taking forever. There you go. Because we can talk to our phone. You see, my friends, life is what you make it. Life is how you express it. Life is where you put your energy, your mind, your spirit, and all the things inside. You know, we're here, and for some people, it's a one-done deal. And if it's a one-done deal, wouldn't you want to do some pretty amazing, fantastic things while you're here? With some amazing people, or without them, who knows? And for some of us, life is always evolving, always changing, you're always coming back, and you're getting, you're just learning and getting better at what you do. Don't you notice as you get older, you seem to be getting more knowledge, you seem to be more knowledgeable, more patient, more understanding, and just have a plethora of ideas that roll out of your head. But the only thing that's different is sometimes your body just can't keep up with that, that system that rolls around here because it's very powerful. Who really knows what happens when we pass away and when we die? No one really truly knows. No one really knows what happens. We have theories and we have ideas and we have books that tell us, people who preach to us. But as the caterpillar moves into its cocoon and its crillis, it goes through a metamorphosis of change. And its entire DNA is reworked, revamped, and rechanged. And then eventually it breaks through. It starts to move out. And it's full of gook, full of gunk. And it's struggling out, coming out of its shell of difference. It doesn't know that it was a caterpillar once. Or does it matter? Does it only matter that it's now a butterfly in a new incarnation, a new existence, in the same plane universally, per se? Does the same thing happen to us? Where we're inside our mother, sitting there for nine months or less or more, do we know we're in there? Do we know that we are going through a metamorphosis, a change, a revamping? Because remember, we were just eggs mutating and changing, mutating and changing. And eventually we start to turn into this little shape, into this little fetus. Some people claim that they remember. I can't say I necessarily remember. But for a good question is, do you remember being in conception? Do you remember conception? Do you remember being in the womb for nine months? Do you remember your first cry? Do you remember crying when you came out of your mom? Do you remember taking your first breath? Do you remember? I would have to say most of us don't remember that. But it happened, right? Why? Because they told us that's what happened. It's documented that that happened. It has been seen that it happens. And we have to trust that it happens. Life is a miracle. There's a billion chance that you may not have been born. And that one billionth decision is probably last, but but that one decision, that one connection created you, created me. And that's why we're here. Because the ancestors, your mother, your father, decided that to have a connection, and that connection was you. A piece of them on both sides. And all the lines seven deep and further 
here now sharing with the world so never take your life for granted never take someone else's life for granted know that the next person that's suffering the next person who's laughing they're just another version of you another piece of you another part of you a part of you looking for answers in the same way and with that I want to say good night to everybody it's good to be here I will see you guys at the jump circle at Schiller Park next week and we are out and I will talk to you soon and you know keep dreaming keep building keep having imagination never stop never quit and we're out of here peace and love take care my friends